Uh, we are going to uh, make a, a little bit of a, a diversion here uh, uh, for, for, for some young people uh, who have promised me that they will, they will be um, um, brief, uh, but certainly uh, uh, we, we, will, we will glean a lot of knowledge from them. I, I am, I'm quite confident. So, so um, the, the young people are here along with Senator Wong, Representative Devlin, uh, is that Pres Representative Farnan uh, here as well? And Representative McCarthy Vahey. And I should note for Senator Minor that some of these young people um, are, are his constituents and, and are future voters. So you might want to note that, <laughs> Senator. Thank you, uh, Chairman Tomiko. Um, thank you, Chairman Cohen, Ranking Member Minor, and, and all the members of the committee for indulging. Uh, it's, it's a busy day, obviously, and, uh, and it's important to note that on the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, um, and I respect and appreciate the committee giving these young people an opportunity. These are young people from Fairfield that have taken time along with their families to have their voices be heard, and I'm happy and proud to know that the, the entire Fairfield delegation on a bipartisan basis are here to support the kids. So we're going to indulge, ask your indulgence, have the kids give the testimony. We'll ask. There are no questions or applauses. We'll let these kids get through that. But beforehand, uh, I'll have my hosting legislators speak briefly and then have the kids speak. So thank you very, very much for this opportunity. And I ask for the crowd's indulgence as well, because I know it's a busy day. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator Cohen and Representative D'Amico, Senator Minor, and the distinguished members of this committee. Uh, the kids who are here, and they do include the town of Wilton as well, um, are from sustainable, uh, the sustainable Youth CT. So they range in different uh, grade levels and have really found environmental issues a passion. They spent a lot of time going through your committee's agenda for today and have developed their own testimony on various issues that they felt really spoke to them. Uh, many had multiple issues they would like to speak on, but I think you'll find they're pretty much focused on one. But thank you so much for the opportunity for these kids to be able to share their thoughts. I'm going to keep it very short and brief. Uh, thank you so much for allowing us to be up here today. Uh, as someone who works in the clean energy space and sees all the clean energy task force uh, around the state, Fairfield really does have something special. And you see that by the fact that we have these amazing kids here. Thank you. And I would just like to echo the thanks. You may recall last year that we had some of these same young people here until very late at night. So. I guess the last shall be first, but thanks also to those who are here and for your indulgence. I look forward to hearing the testimony. Good morning, Chairs Cohen and Miko, and all the members of the Environment Committee. Thank you for letting me address you this morning. My name is Olivia Larickia, and I'm a seventh grader in Fairfield, Connecticut, and a proud member of Sustainable Youth CT. I'm here today to speak in support of Bill Number 5339 which addresses prohibiting the intentional release of helium balloons into the atmosphere. When a helium-filled balloon, helium balloon is set free, it does not just float away into space. They either get snagged on something such as tree branches or electrical wires, deflate and make their way back down, or rise until they pop and fall back to Earth. About 71% of Earth's surface is made up of water. This means that oftentimes a balloon comes back down to Earth, it will land in water. When this happens, many marine animals make the common mistake of thinking these small segments of balloon are food. For example, endangered sea turtles are at special risk because of the balloon's shiny mylar material or latex made with vibrant colors which, res which resemble their favorite food, jellyfish, when floating in the water. When mistaken for food and eaten, balloons may clog a turtle's digestive system, leaving the animal to starve to death. The main issue with any plastic, balloons included, is that it never biodegrades and instead ends up on beaches and in bodies of water. While it doesn't biodegrade, plastic does, however, break into smaller and smaller pieces referred to as microplastics. This means we have plastic of all sizes and shapes wreaking havoc on the environment. Additionally, these microplastics are nearly impossible to clean up. I have experienced firsthand the difficulty in removing these microplastics from the environment. 
I have volunteered a number of hours combing the beaches of coastal Connecticut with Surfrider Foundation, and I have learned that one can spend many hours focusing on a small area, picking up endless pieces of these tiny microplastics. Not only is the material balloons are made of harmful to the environment and wild, wildlife, but also the strings that are usually attached. For instance, animals can become entangled when, a balloon string, when the balloon strings wrap around them, which can lead to injury, illness, and suffocation. Although releasing balloons into the atmosphere as a salamation may seem fun, we simply can't ignore the environmental impact of this action. In my opinion, it's just simply not worth it. Balloons are another item that we can add to the seemingly never-ending list of plastic stuff we don't really need but think we do. And I hate to be a party pooper, but I think we could find other ways to celebrate. Members of the committee, I hope that you will consider passing Bill 5339. Thank you for your time. Thank you. My name is Jane Cochran and I am in second grade. I am an Earth Ranger at Roger Sherman School in Fairfield, Connecticut. I am speaking about Bill HB number 5340. I like being an Earth Ranger because it keeps our natural resources beautiful and clean. I also like being an Earth Ranger because it helps our Earth, the place where we all live. I think changing the recycling bottle bill. I think changing the bottle bill is important because it would make our recycling process much cleaner. More items would be able to be reused. Glass would not break in the process and mix with plastic and paper. When glass mixes with the paper, the small pieces of glass break the paper and we cannot recycle it. When the small pieces of glass mix with the other plastics, we cannot recycle that plastic again and it ends up in a landfill. Please help keep our earth clean. Thank you. Why, hello there. <laughs> Good morning, Chairs Cohen and D'Amico and all the members of the Environmental Committee. Thank you for letting me address you this morning. My name is Esad Sayed and I'm currently a South Korean Fairfield. I've gladly taken the day off um, <laughs> from, school, from, from school today to come here as a member at the same school so you'd CT and address you all. I'm speaking in favor of Bill 301. First of all, I would like to thank the legislator for, giving, for letting me speak up at this hearing. Bill 301 um, speaks about restricting the use of chlorpyrifos refills in Connecticut. Chlorpyrifos refills original use was a deteriorative Nazi nerve gas that was used in World War II and now it is sprayed on pesticides and food crops to exterminate insects, whether they be in your soil or your food. The National Pesticide Information Center um, says that chlorpyrifos refills work by blocking an enzyme which controls messages that travel between the nerves. Um, cells. When the ner enzyme is blocked, the nervous system can't send normal si signals. This causes the nervous system to malfunction, and this is how it eventually kills the pest. Happy thoughts, people. <laughs> not only that, not only that, but you can also ingest a pesticide by either coming in contact with it, inhaling it, or eating or eating it. A report from Harvard University study um, says that chlorpyrifos refills were found in 91% of homes in a sample in the U.S. from 2001 to 2002. This means that in the U.S. there are hundreds of millions of people eating contaminated food. Um, some of the effects include long-term memory, um, attention, attention difficulties, decision-making, and speech. I myself have seen kids in my school system who are working very hard to overcome these problems. And many people are encouraged to eat fruit because an apple a day keeps a doctor away. I'm looking at you doctors. Anyway, we, can, we simply cannot have chlorophyll refills in our food, water, or anywhere near us if you want to, to not only keep ourselves safe, but also keep young children whose brains are still developing safe. As the EPA has said in the past, there is simply no safe way to use chlorophyll refills, so we cannot allow the chemical in Connecticut. Currently, according to a spreadsheet made by Tara Cook Lipman, which shows all of Connecticut's chlorpyrifo usage, we used up to 800 gallons of chlorpyrifos in the year two, 2019. For a chemical that was used um, in World War II, we should not be using 800 gallons of it for everyday use. This amount of pesticide is going into the, um, the air we breathe, the food we eat, and the water we drink. As a community, we must prohibit the use of chlorpyrifos. Members of the committee, I urge you to consider passing Bill 301. Thank you for your time. Now I have to go back to school. Good morning, members of the committee. My name is Nathan Levy. I live in Fairfield, Connecticut, and I'm a sixth grader at Tomlinson Middle School. 
I'm proud to be a part of the newly formed Sustainable Youth Connecticut and the global movement of kids who are speaking out about the world they are inheriting and speaking up about the world they wish to live in. I'm here to testify in favor of SB 11, the State Solid Waste System Bill, or the Recycle Bill. In our home in Fairfield, we do our best to recycle. Probably like most homes, we have two trash bins, one for regular trash and one for recycling. My mom is the enforcer and also the judge of what is and what is not recyclable. My dad is always asking which is which. He's still working on it. <laughs> About every two to three days, I empty the recyclable trash into the blue bin in the garage where it's picked up once a week to be recycled. Or so I thought. I learned that our towns and our state does not hold people or companies responsible for making sure that recyclables get recycled, and that needs to change. Recycling and reducing waste plays an important role in climate protection by keeping trash out of incinerators and landfills where it can produce powerful greenhouse gas emissions. When our trash is disposed of in an incinerator, it releases both carbon dioxide and nitrous oxide into the atmosphere. Recycling reduces the need for extracting, refining, and processing raw materials. All of these create substantial air and water pollution. Where I live in Fairfield, the air quality is some of the worst in the country. As recycling saves energy, it also helps air quality while reducing greenhouse gas emissions, which helps ta to tackle climate change, which is our common goal. SB 11 holds people, businesses, towns, and our state accountable. It sets goals and targets to ensure that everyone is involved and united to tackle this problem. It will help to create new ways of thinking different when trying to solve this problem, which will create new jobs that help save the planet. The protection of our environment should not be political because Connecticut and the Earth is all of our homes and it's up to everyone to ensure we keep it clean. Connecticut should be a leader, not a follower. Together, we should be the ones to rise up and make a change. Sometimes, a small change from a small voice can grow to a large united chorus to change the world. Thank you. Sorry about this. Technical difficulties. You'll yeah. Learn. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Okay. Um, good morning, Chairs Cohen and D'Amico, and all the members of the Environment Committee. Thank you for letting me address you this morning. My name is Forrest Hendler. I'm an 11 year I'm 11 years old and a resident in Fairfield, Connecticut. I'm also a proud Sustainable Youth Connecticut member, and I'm also a rhino and elephant lover. I'm here to share my testimony on the bill called. Uh, Senate Bill Number 294, the sale and trade of ivory and rhinoceros horns in Connecticut. Elephants and rhinoceroses are being poached, poached into extinction for their ivory and horns. Making the trade of ivory and horns illegal in Connecticut will cut off demand for the poaching of these beautiful animals. Hundreds of thousands of elephants and rhinoceroses are being killed for their tusks and horns, all because of commercial demand for ivory. This particular poaching is a major funding source for terrorist organizations. Connecticut can, and hopefully will, help stop criminals who take advantage of loopholes in illegal trade laws as a cover for illegal ivory. A number of terrorist and militia groups operating within Africa poach these animals for their ivory and then sell it on the black market. I'm asking you to pass this bill because it will, one, help put an end to poaching and killing these amazing creatures, two, stop the extinction these animals are facing, and three, help put a stop to terrorists that poach these animals. Thank you. Honorable chairs and members of the Environmental Committee, my name is Joshua Zeng and I'm a high school freshman. Thank you for this opportunity to come and testify in support of race bill number 5344, which will limit offshore drilling for oil and gas. There are many reasons to support this bill, but I'm just gonna start with the personal. As a child growing up in Connecticut, I went to Sherwood Island State Park at least once a month during the warmer times of the year. And many other public beaches across the Connecticut coastline uh, definitely hold the same sentimental value to many other citizens of our state. That these places, for me, it just happens to be Sherwood Island, these places will be in our memories forever. But we shouldn't keep this privilege to ourselves. We are obligated to maintain these wonderful places so they can exist for generations to come. And that is why we cannot allow offshore drilling to persist in our state. Our coasts are a valuable resource, and nowhere else, nowhere else on earth is like them. But once they're gone, they will only be memories in our generation's mind, my generation's mind. My generation could be the last generation 
to see these um, places in Connecticut the way they are now. If we allow offshore drilling to persist in our state, these places will not exist the same way they are now for the children of the future. So I ask you, why? Why should we ruin the aesthetic of these places? Why should we endanger wildlife and public health, put chemicals into our water, contribute to global warming, all for the sake of this degenerative and degrading industry of fossil fuels? We should instead direct our resources to cleaner energy, be the leader that we are in the U.S., and as a benefit of that, our beautiful Long Island Sound can be preserved. Do it for the future, please. I strongly urge you to vote yes on HB 5344. Thank you. Good morning, Chairs, Honorable Cohen and D'Amico, and members of the Environment Committee. Thank you for allowing me to address you today. My name is Vihan Jarwarzana, and I'll be speaking today in support of Senate Bill 298, an act concerning food waste diversion and anaerobic digestion facilities. The basis of expanding anaerobic digestion plants is to enable food waste to be di diverted from landfills and overall reduce the emission of greenhouse gases. This action would enable Connecticut to be a pioneer in landfill art alternatives and would be a huge step in the path towards a net zero emission future. Senate Bill 298 will look to repeal Section 22A, 226E, and will have waste providers with an annual projected volume of 104 tons within a 20 mile radius and those with an annual projected volume of 52 tons within a 40 mile radius to send garbage to an anaerobic digestion plant. <coughs> the advantages apparent in this bill are that the expansion of anaerobic digestion plants would be a net energy producing process, would sanitize waste, and would form more effective byproducts than conventional composting means. Over the past two years, my school district, Wilton Public Schools, has been enrolled in an anaerobic digestion program with curbside compost, allowing students to compost, recycle, and throw away leftovers. The integration of this program in my school was also compounded with lessons in multiple STEM classes, which all taught us about our impact on glo global climate change. An expansion of this bill would enable many commercial, municipal, and educational areas to preserve the land, wildlife, and the future Connecticut. And Senate Bill 298 can be a major step in Connecticut's path of addressing climate change. Thank you. Thank you again to the committee leaders. Oh, oh. That's a new one. Good morning, Chairs Cohen and D'Amico and members of the Environment Committee. I am a junior at Fairfield Ward. My name is Daniel Vahey, and I've come here uh, today to speak in favor of HB 5344, an act prohibiting offshore drilling for oil and gas in Connecticut, and to ask for your support of this bill. A few months ago, during some research for a school project, I learned of a newly developing phenomenon in American culture, one that relates to the issues that we have addressed today. Uh, psychic numbing occurs when our minds are overwhelmed with a constant influx of negative news such as the gun violence and climate change issues we see in our news all the time. We tend to separate our realities from what we are hearing, becoming numb to the threats we are facing as a coping mechanism. America today, as we all know, is faced with the looming and rapidly worsening climate crisis. I could sit here and drone on with statistics and numbers, pointing out that we are running out of time, but I would rather ask you today to recognize our situation as the reality and to truly understand that coastal cities will begin to flood, ecosystems will collapse, our lives as we know it will be over. Already, we see places such as Indonesia having to move their capital city because of climate change. We can no longer afford to rely on fossil fuels with such great stakes at hand. Growth in the fossil fuel industry must be stopped and the transition to renewables must begin. Voting to allow the expansion of drilling would be an error we cannot make anymore. It is for that reason that I ask you to vote not only in your best interests, but the best interests of Connecticut citizens to protect the only planet that we have. Thank you for your time today. I think now that's it. And, and again, I want to thank the committee and, and um, the leadership and the indulgence of all the other people giving testimony, you have given these kids a tremendous life experience that they will carry for the rest of their lives. So thank you very, very much. Thank you, Senator. I couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you very much. I believe Senator Cohen has a message for the young people. Well, I just want to say thank you. You guys should all be incredibly proud of yourselves. I am 
so impressed by the testimony and so impressed that you're taking part of, in the legislative process. So I would just encourage you to follow this legislation along, uh, continue to reach out to legislators. I know uh, your legislators are standing with you and they are beaming right now uh, with pride. And uh, as am I, because you are our future and I have so much hope for a greener, more sustainable one uh, because of each and every one of you. So. So thank you so much for all you've done. Senator, you bring up a great point. It is the adult advocates and their parents who have supported them. They're here today and driving the kids up here. So I, I'm glad that you mentioned that. We want to acknowledge uh, Mary Hogue and, and all the parents that are supporting and empowering their children to succeed. So thank you.